यजुवति श्रोत्रादीनेन्द्रियान्ये संयमाशुजुवति शब्दादीन्दृशयानंद्रियाशुजुवति सर्वाणींद्रियकर्मा प्राणकर्मा चापरे आत्मसंयमोगाग्नौ जुवती ज्ञानदीपते So very happy new year everyone. God bless everyone in the pursuit of their own self improvement and self discovery. Chapter four. Is Bhagwan restating? It's almost like beginning the Gita again after he finishes the topic in the second and the third chapter. Fourth chapter, he begins again. because having laid out the knowledge in these two chapters 2 and 3 of what is the method of finding mental freedom relatively and absolutely as the vedas reveal to us so the vedas prime objective is to reveal to mankind the path by which there is a reduction of mental disturbances agitations mental felt incompleteness etc up to the point of complete freedom complete fulfillment so i'm just repeating it vedas have and continue to show it is not an ancient text it is as alive as it has ever been as long as human life is there the validity of the knowledge contained in vedas is there vedas ka topic kya hai just as hum puche if someone is interested in science and we ask why did you get interested in science what is it that you were so interested that you were not a student of say, civics or you were not a student of social sciences and you became a student of science it is the content of the subject that there is a scientific inquiry into life and living there is a method of inquiry it is not that there are certain rules that have been laid out which you are mugging up it is an ever unfolding system of knowledge science is dealing with material layers material world and constantly unfolding the layers so the person who is a scientific minded person is generally a person who is interested in knowledge he wants to know about things he wants to know about life he wants to know and his approach to it is he gets fascinated by the content that science holds so if he wa- is more interested in the life living process he gets fascinated by biology etc what is the content of vedas vedas is also knowledge sadly it has been associated too much with religion and less with knowledge you have to pass through tremendous layers of 
misinterpretation of Vedas in the society over the times to arrive at the right understanding of Vedas, which is actually it is knowledge based alone. It is not a religion based text. It is knowledge based text. If it is knowledge based text, so what is the content of it? Kya uska aisa vishay hai jisse humme ek interest jage? Keep equating it to the example of science. Everybody doesn't have an interest in science. Those who have interest in science need not have interest in history. Those who have interest in history don't have interest in science. You can have an interest only in some subjects and not in all the subjects. Which subject fascinates you? That is dependent on what your interest is in and you gravitate towards that. That subject fulfills those criteria. What is it in the Vedas that is actually interest of mankind? How does one grow into that interest? That you start beginning to see it only as knowledge based. Kya vishay ho sakta hai uska jisse meri ek jagratta, a curiosity, ek ichha develop ho that I would want to pursue that system of knowledge. What would that be? Veda starts with and here because we are studying Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita first chapter describes that. We all know this but I am repeating it for the sake of some new people. First chapter of the Gita is describing that state, revealing the content which is going to be the topic of the Veda. What is that content? Manasthiti. Manushya mana sthiti. Ek manushya ki man ki sthiti. Kaisi ho sakti hai. And in a lifespan, kitni fluctuate hoti hai. Lifespan forget. In a day, how much does it fluctuate? <coughs> As a child, you would not remember much of a sad day. You would not remember your own childhood. And that you were having some uh, deep seated <coughs> sorrows. You don't remember much. You may have had them. But the predominance of the days was happiness, was joyfulness, was cheer, was playfulness, was looking forward, was enthusiasm. Was somehow that, you know, ek, ek feel hota hai. Every child has a feel that he is born to conquer the world. Every child feels, I am the master here and I am born to conquer the world. The same child that we have now grown up into from, the same child today has to remember the days, even in a day, has to remember the moments when they experience some spark of happiness. Why is it ki manasthiti jisse hum paida hue hain, wo manasthiti Zindagi jite 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 aisi badalti hai ki the same life sometimes becomes strenuous, sometimes becomes a burden, sometimes becomes insolvable, sometimes becomes a dead alley, a dark alley. Some lives lose hopes, some lives become dejected, some lives become desperate, some lives are frustrated, etc. etc. So many, each one of us is a, is a history in ourselves. What is it that Veda talks of? Ye jo manasthiti hai. Is manasthiti is the content of the Veda. That, is, that itself is the content. Iske do purpose hai. While physics and chemistry and biology and history and all these subjects are acquired knowledge will end with this life. You will not be able to carry anything forward. The content of the Vedas is that it continues to be there relevant life after life. Whether you believe in it or not is irrespective. The content of Veda says you have a life. After life, after life, after life. You have come from many lives behind. You may not accept it is entirely a different matter. But the content of Veda is that it says what you experience now here is in continuation and it continues to be there 
till the time you find that formula you hit upon that formula you hit upon that inner balance you hit upon that inner samata you hit upon that inner state of equilibrium you find the relative peace within this life with the help of certain aspects of knowledge with the help of knowledge you find that relative peace here and because veda deals the fact that agar aapki manasthiti aaj jaisi hai or kal when you wake up will also carry similar thoughts we haven't found ourselves with such change in our thought patterns we found moods changing we found our mind state changing but we don't find that certain patterns of our thinking change over a period of time easily that you will continue forward and till that is dealt with also you will not find permanent freedom so what is the content of the veda i am summarizing knowledge based what is this knowledge based it is only aiming at manasthiti what is the topic of manasthiti not just relative peace within a lifetime but absolute peace absolute freedom such that even in lifetimes will not be an experience forget it lifetime itself will cease to be an experience means when you have gained that absolute peace you end the cycle of lifetimes that is the gain now the whole scope of Ved- vedic knowledge this is the scope of vedic knowledge now starting the first chapter arjun ki sthiti which we are all very well knowing throughout society also it's fairly well known arjun ki sthiti is very parallel to everybody else geeta has only picked up arjuna as an example to represent manasthiti that we have chapter 2 <coughs> krishna gave out the knowledge with which one gets permanent freedom what is that knowledge the essence of it the essence is as long as you see yourself to be a limited finite human being who was born and who will die who is subject to afflictions from the external world you are going to be subject to pain and sorrow this pain and sorrow is your associated manasthiti of dukham you are going to be associated with some, you will have the experience of some dukham or the other ruk ruk ke ruk ruk ke ek sort hoga dusra aayega ek sort hoga dusra aayega you know that like why me question almost is there for everyone why only me why is it that bhagwan chooses me as an as an exceptional case to keep throwing obstacles ek solve hota hai dusra aa jata hai fir usko karo why am i chosen one for such things the fact is the minute you are representing that state of mind it is coming from the notion that you see yourself capable of being victimized jab tak aap apni hi value apni khud ki value forget duniya tumhe kya value deti hai log tumhe kya value dete hai your own self value if your own self value and your own self worth is this that you are subject to being disturbed your own self worth is this ki you feel that you are subject to getting affected by things and people means you have greater power you've given greater power to outside things and beings if that power placement has shifted to external sources you are seeing yourself as a small being hmm? remember the story of the gulliver's travel hmm? how many dwarfs were there hundreds and thousands but if it was only one gulliver and said 10 such dwarfs who would be stronger gulliver but when there were so many such dwarfs 
even gulliver was held down that means what if you see yourself as someone who can lose strength on their own self as someone who can lose their own peace of mind whatever be the condition outside the fact that i think some condition outside can upset me that some condition outside can affect me makes that a gulliver and makes you tiny dwarf <laughs> fact is veda says reverse the vision you reverse it if your self worth increases your self value increases your self value increases means what you give a very high value to your life to your capacity to live life you trust in the forces that have brought life into you your trust in those forces is so high that it cannot give rise to a small life insignificant life however small any living being on this planet is the smallest microbial living form also has a place on the planet wherever there is an expression of life that expression of life is not because of us that which has given expression to life has given expression to so many forms of life it cannot be so small in its capacity or power it cannot be so tiny it cannot be so meaningless it cannot be so futile it cannot be so useless it it just cannot be something or someone that doesn't have power so when a person begins to feel helpless powerless over their situations that's the time veda says jab tak ye bhav tum mein aa raha hai na ye sirf ek galat soch ki natija hai it's not a fact i'm repeating this every time a person goes through a feeling i am nothing i'm powerless i'm helpless the situation is stronger people are stronger i get abused i get as long as you feel helpless till then the reason for that helplessness is that it is born from only a wrong thinking bas ek soch ka farak hai your fact is not right just as human beings in the early stages of scientific development felt that earth was the center of the universe <coughs> and then when it discovered that earth is not the center of the universe we human beings are very very uh, we apni galti ke through bhi we feel that nahi nahi it was a process of learning you know now that we know that we made fool of ourselves there no we were in the process of learning this process of learning what the veda says is begin that process of learning on yourself as long as you are seeing yourself to be the limited being expect i'm repeating expect expect yourself to be dukhi atma as long as you are seeing yourself limited helpless in the hands of the world under the circumstances so long expect yourself to have spasms of dukha spasmodic dukha you will have a spasmodic dukha suddenly there will be a spasm and then hath pair lagta hai thoda sa and then some relief because something else happens you cannot be freed of the spasmodic dukhams this wrong thinking which has brought about this mana sthiti this is the root cause 
and till this root cause is uprooted so long you will not find relative peace neither will you find long time peace neither will you find permanent peace in other words every individual has a choice a choice to continue to remain afflicted a choice to follow and be relatively peaceful and a choice to attempt permanent peacefulness this temporary state change of thought how does that come about started the second chapter by saying attempt the first final one final peace means permanent peace when do you get that permanent peace when you understand that i am not this tiny being that my own self atma is what nirvikari ajanma amrityu shashvat kutastha nityam to whom shastra a uh, weapon doesn't shastra doesn't cut fire doesn't burn water doesn't wet you are not this small being but you are essential identity is the one that is free of all that is there expressed as life that free you already free you you have to discover it that free you is called atman that free you is called brahman that free you is already here listening but the listener thinks he who is he the listener is not seeing himself as atman the listener is identified himself with this form called the body and the body has its own qualities therefore the listener is identified with the qualities of the body the listener has got its own mental notions the listener is identified with the mental notions etc this listener who is in association with the body with the mind with the thinking this small listener is the one who is now to begin the inquiry of discovering who is he in essence how am i brahman veda says you are the absolute free being my experience tells me i am not this process of self discovery when you see atman yourself as all these lakshanas that one just pointed out that was the whole process of knowledge it's a process of knowledge just as when you start any scientific knowledge you start with certain basics you know and remember the first time you had your chemistry table element ka table and each each element has its own number and then you found the whole table so overwhelming you know and like god why do i have to study the uh, this table what table was it called periodic table periodic table, periodic table. the periodic table was very overwhelming you know and yet you had to mug it up because you didn't even see its relevance in life did you see its relevance in life for yourself but you had to why see these are very you have to draw parallels to vedic knowledge today you don't find any, most of us didn't find any relevance to vedic knowledge when we first came, when the knowledge came in our life we just didn't find any relevance it's like a periodic table and then slowly slowly you started coming into sanskrit and when you first got the maheshwar sutras and you say i want to read rick a on this what is the connection can you just not tell me straight away the meaning of the verse you saw the irrelevance of it because what you wanted was an immediate relief you want something now that will solve this and it should solve it for good means abhi ke abhi mujhe ek aisa kuch bata do 
कि जिससे मेरा सब सब बंधनों से मुक्ति हो जाए मुझे और वो मुक्ति में ऐसी मुक्ति हो कि वापस कोई बंधन ना बने मीन्स आई शुड बी लिविंग अ लाइफ लेट मी लिव माई लाइफ बट रिमूव द बंधन दिस इज कोट अनकोट योर अवर लैंग्वेज राइट आई वॉन्ट टू कंटिन्यू लिविंग माई लाइफ एज इज मतलब बदलो नहीं मेरा कुछ भी यहां पर मतलब कंटिन्यू टू गिव मी अमन फॉर्म बट रिमूव द बंधन आई एम रिपीटेड दिस बिकॉज दिस इज वॉट इज गोइंग टू बी योर कर्म योग वेरी सो यू हैव टू रिलेट इट वॉट इज इट दैट वी टॉक इन अवर लाइफ आई वॉन्ट एवरीथिंग आई वॉन्ट प्रोस्पेरिटी आई वॉन्ट हेल्थ I want people around me. I want family. I want children. I want profession. I want fame. I want success. I want all this. But remove the bandhan part. Remove that element which is causing disturbance. Whatever be that element for me, just remove that. Rest of it, give it to me because that will be my idea of fulfillment. I want it now. But when the Veda says that to gain that happiness that you are asking for, which is very possible. it's not going to be happening overnight there'll be a process of self discovery how is this process of self discovery final discovery is that you are atman the day this final discovery happens that day your base of seeing yourself as small which technically we call as avidya that base itself will be destroyed that means now you have vidya which vidya you have brahma vidya this brahma vidya means i claim myself to be the formless conscious pure awareness ever there ever existent free of birth and death free of changes a notion a recognition of such freedom you think this person is going to feel small if some situation comes of difficulty the same situation that we feel today very powerful that makes us small if your knowledge completes because the scripture is talking to us who feel small it takes it fast forward to express the That person जिसकी complete हो गई it doesn't mean कि आपकी complete नहीं है it just means you in the future is represented by someone else and here in this context it's Krishna. You today is Arjuna. You yourself is represented in your complete knowledge as Krishna. Your own complete knowledge is spoken of as that of a ज्ञानी ज्ञानी का लक्षण ज्ञानी का व्यवहार ज्ञानी का रूप ज्ञानी का मनस्थिति दैट ज्ञानी इज नॉट अनदर पर्सन दैट ज्ञानी इज यू योर सेल्फ फास्ट फॉरवर्ड वेन योर नॉलेज गेट्स कंप्लीट कंप्लीटली अनफोल्डेड इन योर सेल्फ दैट परमानेंट सोल्यूशन चैप्टर टू not having understood like most of us find a difficulty at the first go shastra said there is no shortcut to it because the belief that i am the small individual is so ingrained and sometimes we uh, sometimes if you have could objectify the layers of one's mind like freud would say unconscious subconscious conscious Shastra says these layers are not like this, black and white. They don't have uh, you know, as a layer. हमको लगता है कि ऐसे एकदम से layer है. This mind is extremely deep seated, and mind is not a separate entity. This mind is this thinking, this whole bundle of thinking. This bundle of thinking is very deeply rooted and seated. because a lot of our actions and our feelings and our confusions have taken birth from this notion that i am the individual that small one is going on getting strengthened every day and 
when it keeps getting so strong you cannot expect it to be thinned away by a little effort you cannot logically you know, our example of a brass vessel in the olden days when they used it every day even silver when they were eating in silver thalis because it could get cleaned every day it was clean but then that got removed and now if you take it out for your puja day if one year every year you do you still if five years you haven't done 10 10 years you haven't done uske baad you give it up only because it's not easy to clean it this is exactly the halat of each seeker humne kitna parath jamaya hai apne pe uska equivalent will be the effort agar aap roz roz apni safai kar rahe the man ki to aapko itni mehnat nahi kabhi bhi lagegi and the gyan will be much more easier a process kaun sa gyan brahma gyan brahma gyan ka fayda kya hai permanent freedom permanent chutkara from that person imagine and never to ever come again in srishti na never collide again can you imagine the the lollipop this the small feeling today one person in our environment is enough to want mumukshatra to in, to increase our mumukshatra now one person in our environment is enough to say i want moksh that moksh should mean what at this point it means never again with this person but actually what is moksh moksh really means never again am i to get subjected to such a notion this because it is a slow process jitni parat hai utna hi dheere dheere nikalta hai क्योंकि हम निकलता बहुत मेहनत लगती है एंड बाय द टाइम वी आर रेडी टू डू दैट सैडली और अनफॉर्चुनेटली और फॉर्चुनेटली और हैप्पीली द डे हैज ऑलरेडी इंक्रीज फाइव टाइम्स मोर पर व्यवहार इन द डे हैज अभी तो हम सुबह उठे थे या क्लास से इंस्पायर होके हम गए और हमने सोचा आज के दिन कम वॉट मे आई विल बी डेडिकेटेड फॉर माई सेल्फ ग्रोथ सेल्फ डेवलप आई टेक द होल डे एज especially the first week of every new year is a very very interesting week of of everyone's new year because the goals are all very 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 high and we just feel thank god that we have got another year to live through because because of this year we have managed to whatever we couldn't do by the time it's second week third week we look forward to the next years happy new year because then again <laughs> as if it will only happen at that time इंटायर प्रोसेस अभी आपने सुबह इतना सा किया सफाई अपने मन की बाय द टाइम यू इंटरक्टेड इन द डे एंड यू स्लेप्ट हाउ मच यू एडेड ऑन अगेन द परत बिकॉज वॉट डिड यू एम्प्लॉय यू एम्प्लॉय द सेम माइंड दिस व्यवहारिक माइंड इज ऑल दैट यू हैव एक्चुअली एज एन एसेट यू कॉल इट एन एसेट और यू कॉल इट एन एमी either way this is your mind which you are working with so by the time you are beginning to do this you realize that your parat has increased so that brahman you are thought ek flash mein agar thodi der ke liye by some anugraha it woke up you know and you feel a little free by the time you have put your chappals in the morning you are again feeling a little tight down this process will take some time before it begins to hold ground so krishna gave third chapter how is it that you will keep converting every aspect of your day into such a mode of life that every day you are adding less and removing more what a fantastic formula so what is the vedas way of giving you relative peace the vedas method of relative peace is you conduct your life in such a way day by day ki tum add kam kar rahe ho remove zyada kar rahe ho kya remove karna hai the feeling of my smallness 
the feeling of me disturbed, the feeling of me unhappiness, the feeling of me having my shortcomings, the feel etc. Whatever gives me the sense of jivatvam, you know, the smallness, limitation, I am working on removing that more than letting experiences of the day strengthen it. Is this, what am I doing? Day to apna chalega. Jab hum dunya mein rehte hain, har kisam ke logon se hum milte hain, vyavhar karte hain. Out of 10 people we meet, there will be few people that trigger the samsara in me. Parat jam jati hai. That smallness bad jati hai meri. That feeling, you know, increase ho jata hai. And there will be just handful sometimes if I'm lucky, I may have some people like that also who help me see the better of me. Ultimately, both of them are my conclusions. Both of them, the good and the bad, are still my conclusions. That I am adding less to myself, to my mental baggage, and I am removing more. Veda says, if you do not live a life like that, aimed like that every day, aspiring for relative peace is also virtually impossible. <coughs> Don't even expect virtual peace. How do you do that? He says, convert everything that you do in your life. Make it divine. Give it a divine connotation. Change the way you focus on yourself. In everything that you do in your life, in your interactions with people, in actions, with whatever you think about yourself, when you are doing ho. Okay, that's the easiest to convert it. Make that divine. Give it a divine influence. Give it a divine imposition. <coughs> How do you give it a divine imposition? Bring in any form of Ishwara to your mind. Ishwara means what? Ishwara means this, this life-giving principle. Life-sustaining principle. I started the class by saying, Life agar idhar hai, to sab jaga hai. I am not the cause of all life. Therefore, this seems to be something very out of my reach kind of a notion. That principle of life, which is, which is bigger than my notion of myself. That principle is called Ishwara. Bhagwan. Kyunki wo mujhe meri zindagi dikh rahi hai. Magar mujhe ye nahi cognize hota hai ki zindagi किस डेप्थ में है अपनी तो छोड़ो आई कैन सी माय लाइफ बट डू आई सी द डेप्थ ऑफ लाइफ इज दिस क्लियर डू आई रिकॉग्नाइज द डेप्थ ऑफ लाइफ इफ द वर्ड्स आर व्हाट इज द डेप्थ ऑफ लाइफ व्हाट इज माय लाइफ me living getting up eating sleeping crying crawling howling laughing enjoying my life is you don't know ma'am my life is all fantastic my idea of my life is what things that i have done in life things that i want to do in life things that i have got in life things that i want to get in etc but this life this breathing principle have you wondered the breathing principle? Have you wondered upon what gives you life? Have you recognized that you are able to get all this because there is something taken for granted here? And what taken for granted is I just don't know how is it that my lungs compress and expand. And to compress and expand, a motor lagi hai which is called the diaphragm. Wo utti hai to mere lungs compress hote hai. So, hawa bahar jati hai, or fir vacuum create hota hai, to hawa uske andar aane ke liye, the diaphragm has to be elastic, it cannot be rigid. So, the diaphragm has to go down, so it has to go up and down, and it has to coordinate with the heart, and the heart has to pump blood, so that the lung that has cleaned up the air and given you the oxygen that you need has to go to every part of your body, for which the heart has to keep pumping ceaselessly, whether you are awake or you are asleep, whether you are doing whatever you are, whether you are drunk on 31st and got. Somewhere, you know, doesn't the heart has to irrespectively go on pumping the so that your notion of your life is what? I don't know. 
is this my notion of life i want to do this ha you don't know my next 5 year goals you don't know my next 10 year goals ha you don't know what i want to achieve this year i want to be on in the forbes list of under 30 i want to do yo yo you don't know what all how much potential i have you don't know how how you know how you breathe do you know how this functions how is it that the oxygen was provided i know we've gone into this many times but in this context unless and until you associate divinity in your life divinity is a word but you have to translate it into some form of an understanding for your own sake jab tak zindagi ko apne se upar pehchanna nahi shuru karoge it is not just me and centered on me and just i seem to be just another example of expression of life you know of so many examples who am i another example when you go out in this weather now and when roses have started coming flowers start blooming and you see a bunch of flowers any flower and you see in that shrub you see all see roses amongst them when one rose will talk to another rose what should it be what is this rose and that rose are they not the expressions of the same tree hmm? same shrub wo aisa hai ye thoda thoda shape mein sab mein antar hota hai magar nikle kahan se hai ye now till we recognize that there is this divine source sing we have we are sourced by something divine to call it as me this small seems illogical it just seems illogical therefore the third chapter had said as many things in your day you can turn into divinity kaam karte ho to apne liye mat karo jahan tumhara focus apne pe shift hoga kaam mein invariably you will have a shoulder pain you know what i mean i don't take it literally <laughs> it just means that my shoulders feel burdened and when the shoulders feel burdened but natural it is not coming because the shoulders are carrying the burden the mind is carrying the burden and when does the mind carry the burden i have to do <sighs> only i do <sighs> how will you ever know how much i have to do the minute the focus has, and please understand i've i've left that statement incomplete the minute the focus is on me and my limbs and my body you have shifted the focus away from the life giving principle if you didn't have the breath <laughs> where would you be i who do so much work where would that expression of crying be hi hi mere sath agar tumhe mere sath hi sab khatam karna hai to what ties you to life is your breath and you are not the creator of this function you did not create the diaphragm moving up and down and the heart pumping etc and the best part of it all that capacity to unite the every every different aspect of function of the body to yourself and say mm. main itni anhoni hai itni anokhi hai this life mm. ki each one of us having same principles of life all of us are just examples of those roses on the bush and yet all of us have a distinct expression of me and this me has nothing to do with tu and then me has mera and tu has tera and the entire this vyavhar of mera and tera and me and tu is what is the mind feeling burdened how have you divinized it simple example can you remember at that point who are you where is this capacity to act come coming from where is this capacity to forget act 
I go a step further. Even your capacity to complain goes to what? That you can complain about it. I yo, why yo, why not? Why me? Where does this capacity come from? You know? The same thing when you rem even if you remember, you will see your own self that your action changes. The same action changes. And when the same action changes, same action is same, same action. You don't have to change actions. You have to change nothing in the world. Everything can remain in its place as is. Nothing outside needs to change. But the only thing that needs a correction is, how am I relating to myself in my vision when I'm engaging myself with the body, with the thoughts? with the world. How do I engage with myself in my vision? When I engage with my body, my thoughts and the world. Is this decodable? How do I view myself? If I view myself as all important, little small entity, subject to victimization, etc., I have forgotten the divinity. And if I forget the divinity, Come back to my first statement. Expect Dukham. Expect it. This is the motivation for every seeker. Any genuine real seeker in the world will always fall for this logic. Expect Dukham, but that is not what I want. Well, if that is not what you want, then there is autocorrection. You have to go on the autocorrect mode. What is the autocorrect? It's not me. You, know? you have been given a choice. The whole third chapter showed to us how you should divinize your action. And if you are divinizing the action, remember one thing. Even prasad as buddhi, that the results are not governed by me, you may not even need that exercise. Was secondary here. When the mind slips from here of Arpan, of seeing divinizing action, then I need to catch it at least at the point of the result. Let me divinize the result, which means whatever has come, whatever is happening in my life, whatever is unfolding in my life, whatever situation is making me feel small, not that it is not there. Shastra has never denied the difficulty of situations. All it says is, you are free despite of it. Can you own that up? Invariably, we are in such a way in our mood. We are in such a way in our mood. If we are in such a way in our mood, we will say, no, but you, in spite of, we are, life here, we are not saying life is easy here. We are not saying situations are all going to be hunky-dory and nice. and you know, Everything is going to be like a Valentine day every day. No way. You know, it's not going to happen like that. You will come to the life. But uske bawajud tum free ho. This, are we ready to own up? No. At that time, we all have seen our minds by now very well. Aisa rigidly pakarta hai us time. Aisa zoro se pakarta hai. Ki us vakhat ke liye to, Divine Bhagwan bhi, you give him a few words. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, where have you given life? You will, entire first chapter exactly as Arjuna spoke. This relative handling of the mind means understanding that actually there is nothing like yourself, your mind, your thought, my desire, my not. It's just a projection stemming from the fact that I don't know who I am third chapter gives all that method of divinizing completing that any person who completes that topic and any teacher who completes the whole knowledge and waits a little longer and says okay open for question and then the student thinks usko sab and then the student asks a question. And then the teacher understands. 
was the topic completed or is to be started again <laughs> and that's exactly what happened in the fourth chapter <laughs> arjuna krishna says i have given you the whole knowledge that was handed in parampara of how to be converting this difficult situation that has come in your life krishna never said you are imagining the situation he accepted it was a difficult he in fact wanted to avoid that situation he said i understand you have a difficult situation arjun but there is a way to deal with this situation so that for now you have relative peace and later you also find freedom your action should not bind you you should not get the feeling later on guilt regret etc etc you know if you if he had managed to go through without knowledge he would have felt guilt for killing his own teacher and grandfather if he did not fight and run away as he wanted to run away he would have regretted it later that i because of kshatriya his his ahankar that was there as a jeeva was not going to be quiet because he felt victimized he felt that they were not being given the rightful things you cannot wish these things away from your system so he said the fourth chapter and krishna and he just asked how was it that you were then and now you know you are here he didn't that means what does that question you know if you go through that question again of arjuna which is chapter 4 and verse 4 chapter 4 verse 4 in our book page 136 and he says aparam bhavato janma param janma vivasvatah katham etad vijaniyam Tom Adau Proktavan Iti Adau in the beginning of creation. Tom you Proktavan you said all this. How Krishna could you have said all this in the beginning of creation? That there is a Sankhya mark, there is a Karma mark. With these two marks, the Pravritti mark, the Nivritti mark. You slowly, slowly establish yourself in the nivritti, and that nivritti mark means sannyasa mark. Sannyasa mark is not just physical state of sannyasa; it is your mental state of sannyasa. Sannyasa, and once you establish into that mental state of sannyasa, where you are seeing the whole world as nothing but taking source from the life principle, sustained by the life principle, that source itself is Brahman, which you are. when you see the whole of this this i have already told you now which i told in the beginning arjuna says how can that be possible <laughs> that you were there and now you are here what did he get from it did he get anything this is the depth of our mental affliction ki jab gyan hamare muh pe pheka bhi jata na i'm saying it in such a long way <laughs> Also, we will understand nothing of it. कुछ नहीं. We won't be able to gather a drop of it. Why? Because the vision is self-obsessed. It's the smallness of the vision. So even when Krishna, Krishna is Krishna. Who, I mean, this is shocking a statement for anybody. I gave it to you, I gave it in the beginning of creation and here I'm giving it to you now. <laughs> All that happened to Arjuna was he shivered by the thought ye kaun hai? You know, ye mujhe tab de raha tha. He missed the entire point of what Krishna was telling him in the second and the third chapter. And all that he said was you have now got the knowledge. Now hear carefully because that's a connection to the fourth chapter. You now have the knowledge <laughs> which is the method with many many people in between have found their living that knowledge have found their relative peace and finally absolute freedom you apply that method in your situation now what is your situation extremely tough you have this near and dear one standing in your, in the opposition party <laughs> So once they are there in the opposition party, you can't win the war till you make them lose. Now a part of you doesn't want to lose them because you are you are connected to them. You have an emotion for them. You have emotional bond bound bond bond with them. 
because of your emotional bonds you don't want to destroy but you also have to win now what a difficult situation now this firstly we always joke in our classes no pehli baat to itni difficult situation to kisi ki life mein nahi aati mostly hum sabko isse zyada difficult lagti zarur hai but itni difficult situation you know you can imagine his halat you know it's only the brave one who can get such dis- such difficult situations you can imagine his halat on one hand he has to win the war you know his wife is also pumping him from behind because badla lena hai aur usko draupadi ko bhi so he is the typical he dharma is on his side forget all this if he has to win the war for dharmic reasons but on the other hand his own people stand opposite him how can this be dharmic war anybody will question and such an extreme situation also the knowledge is it is not in the action but is in entirely your own thought process behind what puts you to action if you can divinize this which means you cannot fool the divinity you cannot say ki acha mara tha maine kyunki mere ko mere ko arpan kiya maine to fir jo phansi chadti hai na wo bhi arpan hi hoti hai prasad hi hoti hai you know you will have to take it as prasad no you will have to recognize that whatever falls in the line of your duty how you have to be continuously doing it and just restrict your vision to that that what gives me the capacity to act has already given me the freedom to act or not to act but by not acting am i expressing my life and gratefulness to life am i getting the point that who has given me the capacity to act has given me the choice not to act and when i take the choice not to act have i expressed my gratefulness to life my rewards will also be accordingly then if i don't express my capacity to act in the light of what gives me the strength to act but natural the results that i keep getting in life are also going to be contrary to what i have always wanted which means jo mujhe shanti deni chahiye jo jeevan mein main shanti dhoond rahi hu jiske liye meri situations outside should at least be conducive they should at we are not saying there can be absolute peace but there should be conducive peace at least then life starts removing that also that's where shastra warns human kind that the force of life in you as a pinnacle of species the human species is such a pinnacle of life that the same species has the capacity to overturn everything and gain their own freedom and the same species can be self destructive if you do not pay heed to the principles so how will you convert this difficult situation he says by sheer understanding that your capacity to act is all surrender it at that point just leave it i can do this much and leave it that leaving it in the hands of ishwara again once this process becomes a habit for you aadat pad jati hai iski soch ki in fact itni freedom feel hone lagti hai ki ab dusri soch se kaam hi nahi hota hai you know then he says again and again invoke that right thinking and once you are stabilized in this arpan buddhi prasad buddhi there afterwards he says you start the reflection on who you are by the help of vedanta shravanam more elaborate explanations of who you are when this gets settled then you 
it's almost like transforming yourself into a gyani. Hmm? Our example of how a butterfly comes becomes a butterfly. Hmm? From that state of a lava, pupa, butterfly, three of them are not alike. Ice, water, steam. Tino bhav same ke hai. Magar tino kitne alag hai. The same you as an agyani. Hmm? Who is self? क्या कहते हैं उसको? Self, self obsessed. You know, अपने ही cocooned in your vision. मतलब मुझे कोई भी ऐसा word नहीं act लगता है जो describe करे कि हमारा state of cocoonness कितना cocoony है. How cocooned it is. <laughs> There's no word to, you know, you have to, you have to recognize that state. And when you recognize it, it it's, it's really shocking. You know, you have to try to do it. It's easy, it's easy to hear it. Then it comes back to itself. It says, why do you leave me from my house? This is my house. That self-obsession is my home. So he says, once you start slowly recognizing, converting your actions, then comes the state where it, you transform. The more you are able to recognize that you are free of all this, everything starts upcycling itself. And then he came finally to the stage of a jnani. Ki aise jeevan ko jo vyatit karta hai apna, vyatit karta hai, that word of divinizing is called yagna. Divinize it. Divinize everything in your life. Divinize your relations. Divinize your actions. You know? When you divinize them, means you are living in the spirit of yagna. This yagna, which was in the Vedic time, when the Vedas were the rule book and not the constitution, when the Vedas were the rule book, at that time, people were following it because it's a rule book. You know? and the Yajna itself was in the Karmkand. How to do the Yajna, you know? etc. And the same Yajna, as you evolve, grow towards being a Jnani, the same yajna now in the 24th verse onwards, he just finished the previous verses of saying who is a jnani. The same yajna now is a jnana yajna. So how does a jnani, a jnani to hum sab jante hum apna jeevan kaise pass on karte hai. Pass on means jeete hai. How do we spend our life as a jnani? मगर ज्ञानी क्या करता है जीवन में फिर मतलब वो कर्म करता है कि नहीं करता है because as I said since I'm generalizing the terms so when you come to specific terms you will realize the clarity is amazing you cannot have a karma without identifying with your body I to I, to do a karma you need some instruments you some need some equipment you need something खाना खाना है तो तुम्हें हाथ चाहिए तुम्हें चम्मच चाहिए तुम्हें खाना चाहिए तुम्हें बनाना चाहिए उसके पहले तुम्हें रॉ मटेरियल चाहिए फिर उसके बाद तुम्हें गैन देयर आर होल स्ट्रीम ऑफ सीरीज ऑफ एक्शंस बिफोर द फाइनल प्रोड्यूस कम्स दैट मींस द होल थिंग कम्स अंडर वन वर्ड कर्मा एंड दिस कर्मा इज ओनली पॉसिबल इफ यू हैव आइडेंटिफाइड विद एन अर्ज इन यू टू ईट अगर आपको भूख ही नहीं लगी है a stomach full person, however much you may bring food, you vomit it. That's one of the ways they torture people. They feed and feed and feed and feed and feed. Imagine a food given to a hungry person is a source of joy. A food given to a full person, fully stuffed person, is a is a means of sorrow. Now same thing, karma has such a vast range. This yajna, when a jnani does, ab wo in sab cheezon ko kaise dekhta hai? 
how does he view the world how does he view himself how does he view the instruments and how does he conduct whatever he does what is his motive for conduction of anything kyon karega wo humko to kuch chahiye isliye hum karte hain gyani kyon karega kuch bhi and shastra in the previous verses had said gyani ko to all the more reason wo karega shastra says though he has a choice not to do but he will do that explanation slowly yagna you know which started actually in the 12th verse also if you notice is where he started from because arjuna has asked such a question so krishna started by saying i have come and then he says people just use the state of agyanata agyani avastha and ask for small 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 things means they do their yagnas which means they do their karmas just to get small things chota mota hmm? this little job little small small goals of life he says these small goals of life shipram hi manushe loke misunderstood <coughs> shipram hi manushe loke they are very easy to get in life is the focus of the verse through karma to get any result in life is shipram कहां पे शिप्रम मींस बहुत आसान है जल्दी से आ जाता है हमें कैसा लगता है एब्सोल्युटली कॉन्ट्ररी टू दिस हमें लगता है हम करते ही जा रहे हैं करते ही जा रहे हैं कुछ होता ही नहीं है आई एम नॉट गेटिंग द रिजल्ट ओनली एंड वेदा टेल्स अस गीता टेल्स अस शिप्रम है वट यू वांट इट्स शिप्रम यू गेट इट इन अ मनुष्य लोक मेनी पीपल यजंत इह देवता have worshiped the gods means they have divinized their actions but only to get small things that means you have brought in the divinity but you have encashed that you have encashed it means you are bargained with bhagwan maine tujhe yaad kiya na ab tu mujhe de so you have bargained with bhagwan so you have encashed it immediately and he says this is very very easy yeah. very easy in this and that capacity to act to perform that yagna starting from this verse he slowly said that those people who continue to do these divinizing the actions but stop asking they just stop asking and what do they ask instead they ask just say give me mental maturity give me the capacity to think correctly give me the capacity to see things correctly give me the capacity to receive things correctly with grace whatever come i will not ask that i want this or i that i only ask whatever you give me allow me the grace to receive it i am scared of my own mind it it doesn't know it can throw up so i will become i will mess up you know all us, all of us mess up our gifts in life so just allow me that buddhi over there because i don't con- entirely it's almost like not that bhagwan is going to give you like in the last class we said it's almost like asking you know, telling your own self recognizing that i'm susceptible to the strength of my own mind of the past momentum the right things i can forget I want to be in recognition of the right things all the time. You know, let all that vega not catch me up. When I continue to do my actions in the spirit of yagna and stop asking anything for myself, and if anything I have to ask, I only ask for my growth from everything, from the sense of limitation, and I ask, let the same action go in. into loka sangrah sarve bhavantu sukhina i don't want anything that slowly he said over the verses last few how he becomes nirashi he etc etc he starts to grow his mind starts to transform is the word remember the word 
acquisition of knowledge if it is not bringing transformation of the of the mind then you are not getting the knowledge lakshan of knowledge is it transforms the vision put it back into science when we believed it was knowledge for us at that time that earth is the center of the universe it was knowledge for us but the minute it got proved could you ever get back to the same belief again can you dismiss knowledge wo jo ek awakening hoti hai na knowledge is in the form of the process of awakening kuch kuch chhatta hai kuch gir jata hai koi koi samjhi na samjhi aisi hoti hai jo khatam ho jata destroy ho jati hai and unfolds sahi samajh जो मोर लास्टिंग होती है वंस यू नो दैट सन सन इज द सेंटर ऑफ द यूनिवर्स फॉर अवर सोलर यूनिवर्स वंस यू नो दैट दैट इज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन नेवर अगेन कमिंग बैक टू इट्स प्रीवियस स्टेट ऑफ इग्नोरेंस दैट प्रीवियस स्टेट वॉज इग्नोरेंस इन द सेम वे वंस यू रेकग्नाइज दैट ऑल दिस इज डिवाइन By slow प्रक्रियाज it doesn't happen overnight as I said. धीरे धीरे आपका मन जैसे जैसे आपका मन स्थिर होता है detach होता है from results, स्थिर होता है in its action, doing it as yoga. You are just doing it for its own sake, leaving the results completely out of your purview because यू not in your context at all. As the mind begins to transform itself in that mental maturity. slowly the last verse had said which is 23rd gata sangasya muktasya gyana avasthita chetasaha such a mind slowly gets sthita in gyanam which gyanam atma gyanam sthit ho jata hai muktasya mukt ho jata hai gata sangaha from whose mind all forms of sangha means that small attachments to your mind to your body to your world to attack all forms of attachments not just in relations attachment to your body also goes attachment to your mind goes attachment to your thinking goes in any form that you limit yourself as a small i that goes in any way that you limit yourself as a small i gata यज्ञ यज्ञाय आचरत ही मूव अबाउट इन द स्पिरिट ऑफ यज्ञ उसका आचरण इज एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ यज्ञ दैट यज्ञ कर्म समग्रम प्रवीलीयते एवरीथिंग डिजॉल्व ऑल कर्म डिजॉल्व अवे मीन्स एनीथिंग दैट ही हैज डन does not get attached back to him and bind him and this is the point that i want to express further expand further in a little more technical way now as an agyani means as jeeva as we are associated with body mind and intellect assuming that i am the doer karta and i get about doing work for some result this small me has asked for a result and i become the bhokta of this this kriya karaka all the means karma action phala ichha that i want to the, the fruit of it the result this whole thing is a cycle which is actually binding me what is binding me the minute i say i want something i take on the cap of a karta and i pick up something to do and i start the process of doing and i want something from it this whole cycle karta karma karana phala 
This is bondage. This bondage is the whole class that we spoke of. The ruk ruk ke spasmodic hoti hai. How does one free oneself? He says the jnani who has now got, like, like the previous verse said, now the context has moved into a jnani. The jnani is viewing himself as who he is, Brahman. And Brahman can never become a karta. Because Brahman is a karta. A karta, Brahman, is what I am. If a karta Brahman I am, then I can't be the karta jiva. And if I am the karta jiva, what happens to a karta Brahman? It remains, but I don't recognize. It's not functional. It's unmanifest in my buddhi. I, a karta Brahman, <coughs> when he does the karma, Everything is Brahman. So the karma itself, the means with which he do, is also Brahman. The same thing that he does, for whom he does, is Brahman. And what he wants is nothing specific because he is fulfilled. So the phal he gets is also Brahman. He says, with this correction of your thought, just that thought ki tum kaun ho, if you are identifying it correctly and then doing a karma, the karma will not bind you. It is virtually a karam. The 18th was, just to take a little look back, because this is now an answer of that also. The 18th was which went on and on and on in explanation. And one of the most uh, good things of Gita, this verse, chapter 4, verse 18. Karmani akarma yaha pashyet. Akarmani cha karma yaha. Sa buddhiman manusheshu. Sa yuktaha kritsna karma krit. The one who sees karmo me akaram. And karam, akaram me karam. सब मनुष्य में एक वही बुद्धिमान है और वही कृत्सन कर्म कृत है means he has accomplished all karmas just to per se the verse itself is a knockdown hey, what is this tongue twister कर्म में अकर्म अकर्म में कर्म this is a delusional state it's not a state of knowledge it looks to us and how beautifully unfolded कर्म किसे कहते हैं और अकर्म किसे कहते हैं जो कर्मों में अकर्म देखता है means that capacity to see the अकर्ता me Brahman who is actually the one engaged in action such a seer he sees it me as अकर्ता and he does karma such a बुद्धिमान कृत्सन कर्मकृत and when he sees a karam me karam, means when he sees that that a karam that people are associating in the jiva buddhi, not doing. As I said in between the class, I have a choice not to do. That choice not to do is not justifying your capacity for life. That is called a karam of jivatva. And this akaram is different from akaram of atma. So jiva na kuch bhi na karne ko aram se sunday ko lays karo baram. Aram se. No, rather zandhi mein kya hai karne. After all, Gita class mein bhi also this is nothing to achieve here. What am I to get? Nothing else to be done. What, where do I have to go? I am Brahman. Where can I go? What can I do? I am all Brahman. You are also Brahman. Why are you asking me to do anything? You also stop doing. And the whole country has become had become and is still not, still the transformation now. lazy to the core because we all think we are Mahatmas we are all uh, great evolved people who have nothing to do in this life everybody else must be doing because they are not as evolved as we are they should do their duties ingrained in us 
it's so ingrained in us because our karma has become like a necessity of life for whom is a karma sanctioned or what is that vision of a karma in him the one who has a brahma buddhi jo brahma buddhi agar tum mein hai to tumhara karma anive akarm hai it has no karta there so it has no bhokta there so there is no karma there fantastic revelation <coughs> so day it strikes home trust me there is an intellectual flight and there is some freedom kisko kehte hain mukti mere karta bhav hi nahi hai lekin usko dabaya nahi ja sakta usko replace nahi kiya ja sakta usko kuch aur nahi samjha ja sakta karta bhav ko koi bhi naam de do is the recognition of the mind is still small i am small brahma buddhi rakhte hue brahman awareness main hu not brahman hai there's a difference brahman is there you know what did you do in the gita class over the years what have you been studying in the gita and the vedanta class jaate rehte ho kya padhte ho everything is brahman <laughs> एवरीथिंग इज ब्रह्मन के आगे एक सेंटेंस और रहता तो वो नींद आ गई थी तब उसके आगे का सेंटेंस है एंड दैट एवरीथिंग इज ब्रह्मन इज यू आर आई एम ब्रह्मन सुनते सुनते नींद आ गई थी क्योंकि आई एम ब्रह्मन हो नहीं सकता आई एम द लिस्नर एंड आई केम टू योर क्लास बिकॉज आई नीड नॉलेज आई नीड नॉलेज बिकॉज आई एम विक्टिमाइज इन द वर्ल्ड बिकॉज द वर्ल्ड विक्टिमाइज मी एंड आई एम विक्टिमाइज बाय द वर्ल्ड so i need some peace so i came to the class so brahman is brahman and i am i <laughs> then you are a karta so don't dare slip into inaction as long as you see yourself as a jeeva don't escape action and action means what is to be done you can only execute the choice of divinizing it do not execute the choice of not doing it once this is cleared off he says this brahman who sees everything as brahman this brahma buddhi now his karma has become defunct it is a karm so what started in the 18th verse is kind of concluding in this verse ki a karm sahi mein kaise samjha jayega only in your action if you see have this buddhi of brahmatvam only then your karma is a karma o arjun now i'm just adding it in the context krishna is telling arjuna ask yourself arjun do you have brahmatva buddhi arjun ki buddhi mein kaun tha arjun dhanurdhari pandav you know शिष्य पिता महाकाल ग्रैंड चाइल्ड है ना रिलेशन ऑल उसकी बुद्धि में आई एम रिलेटेड टू ऑल दिस आई एम अ फादर आई एम अ ब्रदर आई एम अ सिस्टर आई एम अ मदर आई एम अ वाइफ आई एम अ दिस आई एम अ फ्रेंड आई एम आई एम ऑल दीज रोल्स पुट इन वन इफ यू आर सो मेनी रोल्स इन वन देन यू आर नॉट सींग योर सेल्फ एज हु यू आर <laughs> then in that case your karma will have to be executed carefully otherwise your karma will bind you so see the shurasya dhara manushya lok mein sirf manushya has this capacity his action will either bind him or they will free him have the capacity to free him only manushya has this and invariably lack of knowledge of this puts us into deeper and deeper samsara hmm? so he says brahma arpanam brahma havihi and now next class we will move on into the technical aspect of this understanding the whole bhashyam in itself is dealing with how this akaram of brahman when brahman buddhi performs the action that called akaram 
and Shankara takes up a beautiful Purva Paksha here and he says, but can we not see this verse as an Upasana? So the technical part or, or the intricate learning in this verse is, which is actually the Gyan part, the intricate verses are casual reading of it. It can be mistaken that Krishna is saying to all of us, in your actions, look upon it as Brahman and do the action. You have to see the thin difference. That if you did not have the Bhashyam support, then this verse can very easily be mistaken to be understood as Krishna is telling Brahma Arpanam, see it as Brahman. <coughs> Brahma Havihi, see it as Havihi when you do, Brahman as when you do the action. Seeing it as this will make it Upasana. And Shankara deals with this topic that why this is not Upasana and why it is Jnanam. So that I think will continue. Next time, now that our little momentum will pick up, we will take it up when mind has gone more into it. Yeah.